AD Piribasilation, Wikipedia article audio. AD Piribasilation is the addition of one or more AD Piribose moieties to a protein. It is a reversible post-translational modification that is involved in many cellular processes, including cell signaling, DNA repair, gene regulation and apoptosis. Improper adpiribosylation has been implicated in some forms of cancer. It is also the basis for the toxicity of bacterial compounds such as cholera toxin, diphtheria toxin, and others. The first suggestion of adpiribosylation surfaced during the early 1960s. At this time, Pierre Chambon and co-workers observed the incorporation of ADP into hen liver nuclei extract. After extensive studies on the acid-insoluble fraction, several different research laboratories were able to identify ADP ribose, derived from NAD+, as the incorporated group. Several years later, the enzymes responsible for this incorporation were identified and given the name polypolymerase. Originally, this group was thought to be a linear sequence of ADP ribose units covalently bonded through a ribose glycosidic bond. It was later reported that branching can occur every 20 to 30 ADP residues. History Catalytic Mechanism the first appearance of mono-ADP ribosylation occurred a year later during a study of toxins, Coronibacterium diphtheria diphtheria toxin was shown to be dependent on NAD and in order for it to be completely effective, leading to the discovery of enzymatic conjugation of a single ADP ribose group by mono-ADP ribosyl transferase. It was initially thought that ADP ribosylation was a post-translational modification involved solely in gene regulation. However, as more enzymes with the ability to ADP ribosylate proteins were discovered, the multifunctional nature of ADP ribosylation became apparent. The first mammalian enzyme with poly-ADP ribose transferase activity was discovered during the late 1980s. For the next 15 years, it was thought to be the only enzyme capable of adding a chain of ADP ribose in mammalian cells. During the late 1980s, ADP ribosyl cyclases, which catalyze the addition of cyclic ADP ribose groups to proteins, were discovered. Finally, sirtuins a family of enzymes that also possess NAD plus dependent deacylation activity, were discovered to also possess mono ADP ribosyl transferase activity. The source of ADP ribose for most enzymes that perform this modification is the redox cofactor NAD plus. In this transfer reaction, the N-glycosidic bond of NAD and that bridges the ADP ribose molecule and the nicotinamide group is cleaved, followed by nucleophilic attack by the target amino acid side chain. ADP ribosyl transferases can perform two types of modifications, mono-ADP ribosylation and poly-ADP ribosylation. Mono-ADP ribosyl transferases commonly catalyze the addition of ADP ribose to arginine side chains using a highly conserved RSEXE motif. The reaction proceeds by breaking the bond between nicotinamide and ribose to form an oxonium ion. Next, the arginine side chain of the target protein then acts a nucleophile attacking the electrophilic carbon adjacent to the oxonium ion. In order for this step to occur, the arginine nucleophile is deprotonated by a glutamate residue on the catalyzing enzyme. Another conserved glutamate residue forms a hydrogen bond with one of the hydroxyl groups on the ribose chain to further facilitate this nucleophilic attack. As a result of the cleavage reaction, nicotinamide is released. The modification can be reversed by ADP ribosyl hydrolases, 
which cleave the N-glycosidic bond between arginine and ribose to release ADP ribose and unmodified protein, NAD and is not restored by the reverse reaction. Polypolymerases are found mostly in eukaryotes and catalyze the transfer of multiple ADP ribose molecules to target proteins. As with mono-ADP ribosylation, the source of ADP ribose is NAD+. PARPs use a catalytic triad of histirglo to facilitate binding of NAD and and positioning of the end of the existing poly-ADP ribose chain on the target protein. The GLO facilitates catalysis and formation of a O-glycosidic linkage between two ribose molecules. There are several other enzymes that recognize poly-ADP ribose chains, hydrolyze them or form branches. Over 800 proteins have been annotated to contain the loosely defined poly-ADP ribose binding motif, therefore, in addition to this modification altering target protein conformation and structure, it may also be used as a tag to recruit other proteins or for regulation of the target protein. Mono-ADP ribosylation Many different amino acid side chains have been described as ADP ribose acceptors. From a chemical perspective, this modification represents protein glycosylation, the transfer of ADP ribose occurs onto amino acid side chains with a nucleophilic oxygen, nitrogen, or sulfur, resulting in N, O, or S glycosidic linkage to the ribose of the ADP ribose. Originally, acidic amino acids were described as the main sites of ADP ribosylation. However, many other ADP ribose acceptor sites such as serine, arginine, cysteine, lysine, diphthamide, phosphoserine, and asparagine have been identified in subsequent works. During DNA damage or cellular stress PARPs are activated leading to an increase in the amount of poly-ADP ribose and a decrease in the amount of NAD+. For over a decade it was thought that PARP1 was the only poly-ADP ribose polymerase in mammalian cells, therefore this enzyme has been the most studied. CASPases are a family of cysteine proteases that are known to play an essential role in programmed cell death. This protease cleaves PARP1 into two fragments, leaving it completely inactive, to limit poly-ADP ribose production. One of its fragments migrates from the nucleus to the cytoplasm and is thought to become a target of autoimmunity. Poly-ADP ribosylation During caspase-independent apoptosis, also called parthenatose, Poly-ADP ribose accumulation can occur due to activation of PARPs or inactivation of polyglycohydrolase, an enzyme that hydrolyzes poly to produce free ADP ribose. Studies have shown poly-ADP ribose drives the translocation of the apoptosis-inducing factor protein to the nucleus where it will mediate DNA fragmentation. It has been suggested that if a failure of caspase activation under stress conditions were to occur, necrotosis would take place. Overactivation of PARPs has led to a necrotic cell death regulated by the tumor necrosis factor protein. Though the mechanism is not yet understood, PARP inhibitors have been shown to affect necrotosis. ADP ribosylation can affect gene expression at nearly every level of regulation, including chromatin organization, transcription factor recruitment and binding, and mRNA processing. The organization of nucleosomes is key to regulation of gene expression, the spacing and organization of nucleosomes changes what regions of DNA are available for transcription machinery to bind and transcribe DNA. PARP1, a poly-ADP ribose polymerase, has been shown to affect chromatin structure and promote changes in the organization of nucleosomes through modification of histones.
Amino acid specificity PARPs have been shown to affect transcription factor structure and cause recruitment of many transcription factors to form complexes at DNA and elicit transcription. Mono AD pyribacil transferases are also shown to affect transcription factor binding at promoters. For example, PARP14, a mono AD pyribacil transferase has been shown to affect stat transcription factor binding. Function Other ADP ribosyl transferases have been shown to modify proteins that bind mRNA, which can cause silencing of that gene transcript. Apoptosis Poly-ADP ribose polymerases can function in DNA repair of single-strand breaks as well as double-strand breaks. In single-strand break repair the PARP can either facilitate removal of an oxidized sugar or strand cleavage. PARP1 binds the single-strand breaks and pulls any nearby base excision repair intermediates close. These intermediates include XRCC1 and APLF and they can be recruited directly or through the PBZ domain of the APLF. This leads to the synthesis of poly-ADP ribose. The PBZ domain is present in many proteins involved in DNA repair and allows for the binding of the PARP and thus ADP ribosylation which recruits repair factors to interact at the break site. PARP2 is a secondary responder to DNA damage but serves to provide functional redundancy in DNA repair. There are many mechanisms for the repair of damaged double-stranded DNA. PARP1 may function as a synapsis factor in alternative non-homologous end joining. Additionally, it has been proposed that PARP1 is required to slow replication forks following DNA damage and promotes homologous recombination at replication forks that may be dysfunctional. It is possible that PARP1 and PARP3 work together in repair of double-stranded DNA and it has been shown that PARP3 is critical for double-stranded break resolution. There are two hypotheses by which PARP1 and PARP3 coincide. The first hypothesis states that the two ADP ribosyl transferases serve to function for each other's inactivity. If PARP3 is lost, this results in single-strand breaks, and thus the recruitment of PARP1. A second hypothesis suggests that the two enzymes work together. PARP3 catalyzes mono-ADP ribosylation and short poly-ADP ribosylation and serves to activate PARP1. Gene Regulation The PARPs have many protein targets at the site of DNA damage. Ku protein and DNA PKCS are both double-stranded break repair components with unknown sites of ADP ribosylation. Histones are another protein target of the PARPs. All core histones and linker histone H1 are ADP ribosylated following DNA damage. The function of these modifications is still unknown, but it has been proposed that ADP ribosylation modulates higher order chromatin structure in efforts to facilitate more accessible sites for repair factors to migrate to the DNA damage. The ubiquitin proteasome system figures prominently in protein degradation. The 20SIXS proteasome consists of a catalytic subunit, and a regulatory subunit. Polyubiquitin chains tag proteins for degradation by the proteasome, which causes hydrolysis of tagged proteins into smaller peptides. Tankurase, an ADP ribosyl transferase, interacts with proteasome regulator PI31. Evidence in Drosophila and human cell lines demonstrates that the Ankirin domain of TNKS facilitates interaction with the N-terminal TNKS binding motif and C-terminal HBYX domain of PI31. 
This promotes AD piribacylation of PI31 by the PARP domain of TNKS. In addition, it was shown that treatment of Drosophila cells with a TNKS inhibitor, XAV939, attenuated 20 SIXS proteasome activity. Moreover, AD piribacylation of PI31 has been demonstrated to block PI31 mediated inhibition of subunits of the 20s particle. Therefore, a working hypothesis is that tankerase mediated AD piribacylation reduces PI31S activity, which in turn decreases protein degradation performed by the proteasome. PARP1 is involved in base excision repair, single and double strand break repair, and chromosomal stability. It is also involved in transcriptional regulation through its facilitation of protein. Protein interactions PARP1 uses NAD and in order to perform its function in apoptosis. If a PARP becomes overactive the cell will have decreased levels of NAD and cofactor as well as decreased levels of ADP and thus will undergo necrosis. This is important in carcinogenesis because it could lead to the selection of PARP1 deficient cells due to their survival advantage during cancer growth. Susceptibility to carcinogenesis under PARP1 deficiency depends significantly on the type of DNA damage incurred. There are many implications that various PARPs are involved in preventing carcinogenesis. As stated previously, PARP1 and PARP2 are involved in Br and chromosomal stability. PARP3 is involved in centrosome regulation. Tankerase is another ADP-ribose polymerase that is involved in telomere length regulation. DNA repair PARP1 inhibition has also been widely studied in anti-cancer therapeutics. The mechanism of action of a PARP1 inhibitor is to enhance the damage done by chemotherapy on the cancerous DNA by disallowing the reparative function of PARP1. Protein degradation PARP14 is another AD piribacylating enzyme that has been well studied in regards to cancer therapy targets, it is a signal transducer and activator of STAT6 transcription interacting protein, and was shown to be associated with the aggressiveness of B-cell lymphomas. Bacterial ADP ribosylating exotoxins covalently transfer an ADP ribose moiety of NAD and to target proteins of infected eukaryotes, to yield nicotinamide and a free hydrogen ion. Bears are produced as enzyme precursors, consisting of AA and B domains. The A domain is responsible for ADP ribosylation activity, and the B domain for translocation of the enzyme across the membrane of the cell. These domains can exist in concert in three forms, first, as single polypeptide chains with A and B domains covalently linked, second, in multi-protein complexes with A and B domains bound by non-covalent interactions, and, third, in multi-protein complexes with A and B domains not directly interacting, prior to processing. Upon activation, bears ADP ribosylate any number of eukaryotic proteins, such mechanism is crucial to the instigation of the diseased states associated with ADP ribosylation. GTP binding proteins, in particular, are well established in bears pathophysiology. For examples, cholera and heat label enterotoxin target the subunit of GS of heterotrimeric GTP binding proteins. As the subunit is ADP ribosylated, it is permanently in an active, GTP bound state. Subsequent activation of intracellular cyclic AMP stimulates the release of fluid and ions from intestinal epithelial cells. Furthermore, 
C3AD pyribosylates GTP binding proteins Rho and RAS, and pertussis AD pyribosylates GI, GO, and GT. In diphtheria, AD pyribosylates ribosomal elongation factor F2, which attenuates protein synthesis. There are a variety of bacteria which employ bears in infection, cholera of Vibrio cholera, heat label enterotoxin of E. coli, exotoxin A of Pseudomonas aeruginosa, pertussis toxin of B. pertussis, C3 toxin of C. botulinum, and diphtheria toxin of Coronibacterium diphtheriae. Clinical Significance Cancer Bacterial Toxins <laughs>